right, Oval fans. Y'all have been knocking on my dang door. Y'all y'all have been busting into my um, <laughs> comment section and DMs on social media like that one cult member did in Nancy's house because you all have been demanding this review. And uh, I like I posted on the YouTube community tab. And yeah, I got to do a quick intro before I get into the episode review. So don't worry, the review's coming. i just been busy. Um... I finally got all my ambition stuff done. That's up on the channel. I did that last night. And I just finished recording my sister's episode review. And let me just say, this video is going to be the oval episode review. But I have at least two other videos I need to do because this episode got me thinking about a lot of stuff. Probably three or four. I don't know. There's a lot to talk about. Off the bat, um, this episode score... Eh, I'm thinking like a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10. 7.5 or 8 out of 10. 7.5. Now, listen to me. Th this was not a terrible episode. Let me just put it that way. Because keep in mind, for sisters, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched my sister's review yet, I was originally going to give that episode a 3 or a 4 out of 10. But the back half of the episode was actually pretty good. So that saved the episode for me. But... After watching the first 20, 25 minutes, I was completely uninterested. But the back half saved it. So 7.5 out of 10 is a fair score. I had a lot of people messaging me about where my reviews at, but also like, well, Jeremy, I don't know if you're going to like this week's episode of Sisters. The Oval was pretty okay, but I'm just getting tired of the same thing. It's the same repetitive dialogue of, Will you tell me what's happening? No, you need to say this. And wait, no, you go ahead and tell them. And when people tell you, and trust me, I've been reviewing the Tyler Perry stuff for a while now. That is a very common writing trope of his. I don't know if it's to fill in time, but it gets old very quickly. And this happened during the scene at the beginning between Gail, Picky, and Barry. This happened with Priscilla and Jean. Um, it, it was just a mess. And I say, and Kyle and Bob, okay. So let, let me just get into the episode review, all right? Let me just do that because I know a lot of people already want me to do it. So before going any further, one last thing. We need about 750 more people to reach 100,000 subscribers. So please hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. I'm trying to get there as quickly as possible. On top of that, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And by the time I finish my review, and I already told you to score 7.5 out of 10. Let me know if you agree with me. Did I score the episode too low? Do you think it should be higher? Do you think it should be low, lower? So we pick up where we left off. Barry, Gail, and Picky. Picky tells Barry he needs to get up out of there. Gail is spooked and decides to leave. Barry comes back in and pretty much exposes Gail for the allegations that she put on him. Picky kicks her ass to the curb. And I think for the first time we know his name is Leon. And I think Leon Stevens is his full name, but Picky is done with her. And that's it. So Gail leaves, and then Barry tells Picky about how Denise was actually gone to the White House. So things are, something strange is going on up in there. So um, the question I want to ask is, how did Barry get out of the store last week? Because Denise locked him in there when she told Max to lock the door. So did did Barry go out of the back or something? Because remember, he was still in the store when Max came to pick up Denise. So I'm going to assume he got out of the back. I don't know. Yeah, because obviously he didn't have a key. So he didn't lock the door back. If he just went through the front door. But I don't know. I'm going to assume he just escaped out of the back. We go back over to Sam and Priscilla. And um, they're talking about how they reminiscing about missing the Obamas and how they usually have their annual staff barbecue. But Maybe they should cancel due to everything that's been going on, not to mention a situation with Nancy and Richard and the fact that, you know, losing their grandchild. Ram pretty much reassures her and Priscilla as well that, you know, hey, you know what? He's good people. They will bring him back. And honestly, he's the glue that helps hold the staff together. And, you know, she'll try to help out as well where she can. Next thing you know, a call comes in and uh, yeah, Sam needs to go back to work because of Gail escaping from the White House. We go over to Hunter, stretch down the... Look, Ed Quinn, man, honestly, who wouldn't want to be Hunter in this show? Because all he does is lounge around. That's it. Lounge around, gets to have sex, and that's it. What a president. So Victoria comes in to tell him about the Gail situation. And again, we get a scene of dribble dialogue when the one secretary or worker tries to let Hunter know what's going on, but he didn't want to be disturbed, and she can't get her words out. 
because he wants her to leave. But then Victoria shows up, tells him about the Gale situation, which he does not believe, and chews him out because Max is gone because she knows it's about the niece and sees that he's watching porn on his computer when he's pretending to be working. That was a funny moment, I will admit. I see the porn in the reflection of your glasses. I'll admit I did get a chuckle out of that. Uh, then we switch over to Max and Denise, and he gets a phone call from Hunter about how Victoria's on the prowl, so you better not come to the White House as of right now. Go park somewhere. Go kind of, you know, wait until I give you the call once things have calmed down around here. Kyle, let, Kyle lets Max know that Gail is gone, and, you know, he says the same dialogue over and over about, man, he's an asshole. Once again, for like the sixth time already in the episode, someone's just recycling dialogue when you first see him on the screen, they say something. And then the last time you see him on screen in the same scene, they say the exact same thing. Okay, so then we go back to, let's see here, Hunter, Victoria, and Jason. And Jason admits to having helped his sister escape. Obviously, he's spooked and doesn't like his mom, tells her to, he won't talk if she's there. So maybe we'll get more on Jason's story as the season goes on because obviously we've been focusing more on Gail. But he tells his father that he went to go she went to go see Picky and talks about how wicked Victoria is, but you know, their main concern right now is finding his sister. And he makes a valid point, is like, Dad, if I can sneak if I can pull one over on the Secret Service, they aren't that good. Well, that's true, but at the same time, Jason, you seem to have very a lot of experience in what you do because I mean, did you pull this kind of stuff back at the governor's mansion? I don't know. So um, then we go, oh, yeah, Hunter and Victoria have a war of words once again. And, you know, it's nothing new. So we go back to the next scene. Um, Denise and Max, she tries to come on to him in terms of, you know, well, you're a man. You think I'm sexy. Do you want to know what he wants? Do you know, do you want to know what the president likes me to do and this and that? She talks about threatening to go to the press, but... Max advises her not to because she is not the first to want to try that and ended up regretting it. And we go back over to Hunter who goes to see security. Kyle pretty much tries to throw Max underneath the bus about how he has been with you since the governor's mansion. So that's not a bad thing that you want him around, but things are different here in the White House. So maybe, you know, I should be the lead and then, you know, have kind of show him the ropes and everything. So Kyle pretty much threw Max under the bus in order to get a promotion, if you will. That's pretty much the gist of the conversation. Um, then we also see that Hunter has advised Kyle to go check and visit Picky. Oh, no, no. Kyle makes a suggestion that he go see this Leon Stevens in person pretty much to let him know what's going down and not to see Gail ever again. So, you know, he goes off to take care of business there. We switch over to Donald and Lily and oh, my God. Ah. Like I said in the last episode, it's the same thing over and over and over. You're quiet tonight, honey. I shot a man. Why don't you tell me about him? It's a need to know basis and you don't need to know. That's all we freaking hear from that. Every scene. Okay, so then Kyle calls Bobby and he's acting like an asshole the entire time. And this is like the least, this is my least favorite thing about the show. I, I don't really care about the Kyle, Bobby, Donald, Donald and Lily thing. He wants him out of the house, and obviously those two have had relations in the past, and that's it, honestly. Th Kyle is like the Justin of the over, you know, Justin from the haves and the have-nots. I don't give a damn. Bobby's probably like the Jeffrey. I, I don't I don't care. I'm sorry. I I'll do a video about it, but I'm not talking about it here. There's nothing to talk about, guys. Recycled dialogue. That's all we hear. Sam shows up to the White House to get security updates on the situation with Gail. Uh, Jean is visited at her home by Secret Service agents who question her about her activities at night. Like, what time did you go home? Was there anyone else in your car? They take her car keys. She calls Priscilla. She pretty much doesn't tell her what's going on, but then plays a game of 20 questions and then figures out it's about Gail and girl, don't worry about it. Your job isn't in danger. You, we know you wouldn't do anything, but they're just following protocol and there's nothing else to say. Um, we go over to Nancy and Sharon. A good. This was probably my first favorite scene of Nancy this entire series so far. Uh, her and Sharon talking. Um, it, they talk about the situation with Barry, and then she's thinking about Kareem, but you know doesn't know she should cheat. And if uh, Nancy did, 
And Nancy says while Richard was in the military, she didn't have se she didn't have a intimate affair, but she definitely was being, I guess you could say, swoon over someone. I guess that's the proper word. But basically, you need to be careful because just because somebody's whispering good things in your ear, you might find out that it's all talk. So she felt bad for cheating on Richard without fully cheating on him, basically allowing a man to kind of come into her life to romance her while her husband was away at war. So that was a good scene. But then we get to probably the most divisive part of the episode, which I'll save for the end of the video, but I, I'll save... I will tell you by the end of this video how many oval videos I'm going to do this week because I have a lot to break down from this episode. One of the cult members that broke into the house, remember at the end of episode one, was it when Ruth got those cult members to come in and take Callie away? One of those same cult members, again, burst into Nancy's house looking for refuge because obviously the cult members are trying to kill her because she's trying to escape the cult. Nancy is rightfully saying, I'm going to call the police. Who the hell are you to come up in my house like this after what you did? Sharon is the one who's being a bit too forgiving of the situation. Now, like I said, I'll get more into this in its own video, but the cult member says not to call the cops because some of the police force are actually involved with the cult. cult. I forgot the name. Look, it was hard for me to pronounce, but the cult name, whatever. And basically, Callie is with the highest right now. And she says, don't call the cops and I'll tell you everything you need to know, even though I don't know where the cult is because they keep moving around. So Sharon offers to give her a meal and everything. And then she's like, well, well, Ruth always talked about how Miss Nancy was so kind and how gentle you were and that you would help people. So I came back. <sighs> Jeremy, calm down. I'm speaking in the third person. Like I said. Let me do a separate video because I have a lot of thoughts. I promise you, I will do a video on it, okay? But let me just finish up the episode review. So Richard, Richard shows up to Picky's territory. A bunch of his goons get up in his face. Uh, Picky goes to tell the guys to leave his uncle alone. He's cool, leave him be. Lies to his uncle about Barry not being there and not even showing up for the night. But then Richard gives him the gun that Barry took from one of the guys and tells him, look, you're better than this. You need to stop living this kind of life. Your father, who was a good man, would turn over in his grave. Picky goes back to tell Barry his dad is gone now, but Barry's mad about Picky telling his dad about the gun situation. But Picky tells Barry, like, look, this isn't you. This isn't, you're better than this. You're a better man than me. Don't mess around with this life. Don't touch these guns no more. Don't do nothing like that. So it's kind of interesting because Picky sees that Barry is a good dude and wants him to stay out of his lifestyle. But then Richard sees that Picky or Leon isn't a bad guy either, but he doesn't want to give up that life. So I do like that family aspect of it. So it was a good scene. He's like, man, I bought you a pizza. Eat the pizza. And then it goes to the next scene or commercial. So now I want a pizza. But in any case, um, we get to Nancy and a cult member finishing up. Well, you know, talking again. Basically, the kids are on buses. That's why they keep moving around from place to place. So the cult isn't in one location. Like, I can't just tell you where the cult is because the cult keeps moving different locations. So we can't really pinpoint where they are. So basically, they're just moving around like ghosts. It's like one minute they're here, the next minute they're there. Um, then she talks about how in terms of people being recruited into the cult, they just go to people who at rehabs or at bus stations and that's how they recruit them to the fold. Nancy shuts it down saying this highest is Tyrone Luckett, who's the biggest con artist. And he's like, look him up. He's been to jail plenty of times and whatnot. But then this cult member is like, no, he just tells us that's a lie and the government's after him. And he's like, child, I ain't got time for this. So Sharon kind of calms down the situation. Um, call tells Nancy to get Richard to come back so maybe he can help out with this. But we later find out the cult member, her own baby, is still with the cult too. But I think Sharon gets the location of like you know where the last place they were was. And didn't she say like she would try to go get the child back or whatever? But she says that would not work because it's like you can't get dressed unless you're seeing the high. I forgot. Look, I kind of that part was kind of confusing to me. So let me know in the comments if you heard that scene correctly. But yeah, this whole thing is weird so Kyle calls Donald they pretty much recap the whole situation with Gail and um, some of Picky's thugs pretty much take Gail away 
and they it looks like they're potentially going to assault her. So the girl who qu cried wolf is about to get bitten, and I'm not joking about that because honestly, that would, I I feel kind of bad, but at the same time, you know, karma's a bitch. Then we go to Donald and Lily. She's still pissed off about you know her being kept in the dark, but she got some good legs. She was lotioning them up. That was, that was okay. Um, um, yeah, she she's mad about being left in the dark. He says duty calls. He has to go back to the White House as soon as Donald leaves, which is kind of weird because that because he goes down the stairs, and then Lily kind of pokes her head down to see if he's really gone, and then goes back to the room and Bobby's there. So it's like wait. Did she know Bobby was there and then wanted to make sure Donald's gone? Or did she just look down in the stain at her husband leaving her once again and then didn't know that Bobby broke into the house? So that's the end of the episode. Um, let me just say up front, 7.5 out of 10. There are some things in the episode that made no damn sense to me. <laughs> and it wasn't a terrible episode, guys. I, I, I did enjoy watching it. But like I said, the whole Bobby, Lily thing, Kyle, I don't care. But let me just say, I'll do a video on all that. I'll do a video talking about Kyle, Bobby, Lily, and Donald. I'm going to do a video about this cult member breaking into the house. I'm probably going to do a video about the Gale situation, like, do you feel bad for Gale? And uh, let me look over the notes again to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, Hunter, Denise, yeah, I, I'm probably going to have like, th I'm probably going to do three separate oval videos and then I might do a video about should Andy stay with Gary. That's probably going to be it. But guys, this is some weird stuff. Like, let me know in the comments. I feel like the cult member thing might be the biggest thing to talk about in the comments. But what do you think? Like, if let's say, and I, I, like I said, I'm really going to dive in deep into this um, topic in this own video. But let's say you were robbed. Let's say you're minding your own business at home. And, you know, okay, for example, I have a nine-year-old nephew. So let's say... I'm I'm at home at my parents' house. My nephew's there. Like four dudes show up, fight you know, beat me to the ground and whatnot. Rob the place and take my nephew. Then the next day, one of those dudes rushes back to my um, parents' house because let's say they they are from that neighborhood. They know they've heard good things about my mom being helpful or something like that, being a kind heart. And then he comes to refuge. Why the hell would I allow you to stay up in my in my parents' house? to get cleaned up and you know what not to save your life that doesn't make any sense to me i i do not understand it that's all i gotta say so let me know your thoughts on um eye on the sparrow wait was I, oh yeah yeah that's right because uh eye on the sparrow that was one of the code names from one of the, what was like the sparrow is out of the nest or whatever so yeah um this episode was kind of confusing to me but let me know your thoughts. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And be on the lookout for my oval and sister videos coming soon.